would you agree with that statement and my second question is are you expecting lukaku to show up uh, in your dressing room at half time <laughs> 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 Well, we travel to San Siro for the second time in this season, and we are going to play the league leaders in Italy. And to talk about it, it's a huge game. It's the UCL round of 16, Liverpool versus Inter Milan game. And to talk about it, Manas is of course with me, and we've also got from Inter India, Parmeshwar. How are you doing, brother? All good, man. Thanks for having me uh, on this show. Like I'm a regular subscriber as well, so it's glad to be. here to talk about the tie which i am myself looking forward to a lot although a lot of inter fans are a bit pessimistic obviously but i am very excited because we are playing liverpool after what like since for the first time since 2007 8 season so yeah looking forward to it uh parmeshwar uh, what were your thoughts when you saw when the draw was made for the second time <laughs> second time and, uh, and you got liverpool so kya feeling tha i don't remember who inter got the first time Is yeah that- Second time. So first, so the first time around we got Ajax, yes. So and honestly, like on paper, obviously that's a more balanced tie, and you know it gives us a better chance of progression. But I mean, see, when you get Liverpool, this is the Champions League after all. Like you have to be prepared to face tough teams at all points. Like you can't run away from that. And I'm, I'm actually personally happy that we are facing Liverpool because Inter are on the up, if you will. And I think facing teams like Liverpool is the only way to increase your quality and level. because you know there are certain players that need this kind of experience in our team you look at bastoni you get barella lotaro these are young players that they play big teams in the serie a but they don't come up teams to come up against teams like liverpool man city or what not so we definitely need this experience but although if you want me to talk about our fan base we are really most like 90% are pessimistic because of course you guys are far better than us at this moment so uh yeah that that's the general reaction but i'm i'm very excited to excited for the match here ये थोड़ा अंडरसेल नहीं कर रहा है खुद को मतलब इंटर आर लाइक सीरिया लीडर्स वी आर वी आर वी हैव एन आउटसाइड चांस ऑफ विनिंग द टाइटल इन आर लीग ये थोड़ा अंडरसेल नहीं कर रहा है सी विद ऑल ड्यू रिस्पेक्ट आई आई मीन आई मीन मी एंड सोनी हैव कवर्ड व्हिच इज व्हाई आई आस्क व्हिच इज व्हाई आई सी आई लव द सीरिया स्पेशली द लास्ट कपल ऑफ इयर्स इट इज ओपेंड अप एंड आफ्टर द स्लाइड slip of juventus it's so open i love certain teams that traditional aspect of italian football is boring is out of the window if you see lazio yeah. if you see atalanta if you see inter the way they play the way they attack uh, but there is a difference in quality when it comes to when i say quality like it's just the premier league is just so strong you know like you could be second in the premier league but you could be far better than the league leaders in italy that is not the case i don't think we are far better i think on paper uh, we are the favorites maybe but uh, we yeah on paper of course we are we are the favorites but the, i understand what you're saying you know like he's he's playing it kind of safe i think he's playing it kind of safe because because brother parmeshwar when i look at your lineup okay uh, i i know bastoni and barella might not barella to definitely not a fail yeah, bastoni ka tu meko batayega but if they're available you got handanovic you got svinia devraya bastoni you got dumfries you got perisic you got chalanoglu you got barella you got brozovic you got zeko you got martinez 11 okay yeah. that is a world class 11 so so you know what worries me like maybe you're right that i exaggerated a bit that you're far better but what worries me is when i look at the depth overall of the team like you can bring a luis diaz off your bench but whereas we have to rely on you you must know manas average players like roberto galliardini in midfield that causes a bit of problem and you know honestly without barella it's mostly going to as things stand uh, vidal is going to start the match and you know you have history with vidal based on how you faced barcelona that one game as well i remember and he's very sluggish currently like he does his best but he just can't cope up with the intensity of high intense teams so like if you put him against an atalanta he will struggle so you can only imagine if what happens if he goes up against a liverpool and with bastoni about an hour ago there's been an update that he took part in group training but 
it still remains to be seen if he can play tomorrow. The club doesn't want to risk it, but let's see. So th- there's a lot of see. If you tell me that Barella was available, Bastoni was for sure available, Gozins was available, Joaquin Correa was available, I'd be much more confident than I am right now. Uh, because these are important players that won't be there tomorrow, and that's a huge miss. Can you tell but us yeah. what is uh, what is uh, not right with Gozins and uh, Correa? Uh, so the thing with Gozins was he was already actually injured at Atalanta, but we bought him as just to strengthen the squad further for a future investment, basically for next season onwards and whatnot. So he'll mostly be there for the second leg, but not of course not the first leg. And Korea, unfortunately, it's been a stop-start season for him. You know, he's scored a few important winners, but. He's gotten injured a lot of times this season and he's been injured since now, what, uh, or later November now. So, it's been quite some time and he's not going to make it the, uh, for the first leg either. So, it's all the second leg when we'll have our key players back. That's it. Nidhi, Nidhi uh, the fact that away goals does not apply now. Yeah. Uh, do you think from Liverpool's sake, it will make a difference? I think it will make a difference uh, for all teams from um, a mental perspective, first of all. Uh, for Ajeev, right? Like, yeah, yeah. right? Because uh, for, for, for as long as we remember, the strategy used to be ki away ja rahe ho. So you go away and then you know you try to keep a clean sheet and maybe nick a goal or two back. Mm-hmm. Right? That was the strategy. Now, suddenly, you flip the switch and say, it doesn't matter. For us, Look, for us, technically, technically on paper, it should not matter because, you know, our forwards are capable of scoring goals anyway, right? Um, and we have scored goals at the San Siro. Yeah. yeah. So, um, technique, I don't think we will struggle in terms of ability, but mentality wise, I think we will struggle as will most other teams. And here, the disadvantage is with the people that play away first. So, Why? Because, see, when Inter come and play at Anfield, you know, that they've, they've already played one game where the away, away goal doesn't count. Right? So, it is going to be the first experience for Inter. That's but Vese, Vese, okay, Vese, okay. In that aspect of it, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a brand, okay. I, I get that, I get that. Uh, uh, Parmeshwar, the, the fact that you guys play three at the back, two wing-backs, Keep the middle, big man, small man. The big man has changed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Has that has has that uh, affected your system in any way? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like, see, you know, Lukaku's been under the microscope for quite some time now. With after his return, but you know, we do miss him to an extent. You know, like for example, I'll just give you a simple reason. Like Jeko, you know, he's he scores the goals. He score he'll score all goals he wants, but he can't do the running that Lukaku does. He can't carry the ball that Lukaku would do. He's yeah. basically a poacher. So, we do miss that definitely. Like, Lukaku would shield the ball. He would run with the ball and bully defenders in this area. Something Jeko can't do anymore because of his age, mainly. Yeah. So, that is a big factor. So, what has happened this season is that whereas we last season we had Lukaku scoring most of the goals, this season we have different players stepping up for scoring goals. So, this season we've had That's 20... Better, That's better, isn't it? You can say so. So, this season we've had 20 different goal scorers as opposed to, you know, mainly relying on Lukaku. But the problem is that, you know, the main strikers aren't taking as much of an onus. Like, Lotharo has zero goals in the Champions League this season. He's not scored since December now. He's completely out of form. Jeko, the problem with Jeko is he'll receive a lot of chances, but he also misses and scores a lot. So, basically, when you deploy, deploy Jeko and Lotharo, it has never worked 90% of the times together. So, tomorrow you might see Alexis Sanchez starting along with Jeko. So, that's the thing. So, there is no guarantee yet. That's the only disadvantage we are at right now. We basically rely on people to score who don't have a high efficiency per se. So, like, you can't tell me that, you know, out of nowhere, you expect Brozovic to score because his job is not to score goals. He's the one who's going to control the midfield. Mm. So, it, it's a, it's good, but it's also it also has its downside. And, and for a team like Inter, you know, if you go back to, if you look at the Champions League website, Inter have created the most chances in the Champions League this season. 117 chances and have only had 37 on target. So that's, and 49 off target. So that just tells you the story of how many chances we miss. Uh, so yeah, that, that's our story pretty much. So that's going to cost us if we do that, you know, versus versus you guys. where Versus a team like Liverpool, if you fluff your chances, that's, that's, that's a wrap. Like, uh, I don't know, Manas, if you saw the first leg versus Real Madrid where we lost 1-0. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, we were the better team for the full 90, but we just didn't take our chances. And Real Madrid showed. Me and Nidhi were watching uh, the both the games. I think at my place only. And yeah. We were both discussing that, boy, the Inter is such a chance creator. Exactly. Kar- exactly. On you guys. And yeah. Boy, we have to be careful. So. बिफोर वी मूव ऑन टू लिवरपूल मानस थोड़ा अपने बारे में भी बात करते हैं बट बिफोर वी मूव ऑन टू लिवरपूल परमेश्वर यू सॉर्ट ऑफ एंसर्ड पार्ट ऑफ वन क्वेश्चन टू क्वेश्चन नाउ द इंटर प्रेसिडेंट हैट वी हैव सोल्ड लुकाकू बट द इफेक्ट ऑन द फील्ड हैज नॉट बीन मच और समथिंग टू टू दैट इफेक्ट वुड यू अग्री विद दैट स्टेटमेंट एंड माई सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज आर यू एक्सपेक्टिंग लुकाकू टू शो अप Uh, in your dressing room at half time <laughs> <laughs> no she she like you know uh, our ceo what he said basically was that mm-hmm. you know with uh, with lukaku being sold and with jeko being bought on a free the thing is at that point jeko was scoring goals for fun immediately when he came so like of course in terms of scoring goals we didn't really miss lukaku and but but of course you know we miss him like you know the way he used to bully defenders in the league and So he can carry the ball, but then you can also argue argue that in the big games, Lukaku did go missing. Like you know, in the la- in last season versus Shakhtar, uh, he fluffed his lines and what not. So, I mean, that was more of a statement for the public, you know, like because in Italy the media is constantly on your case to bash clubs like Inter, AC Milan, Napoli. Barring Juventus, you have to bash everyone. That's the that's the agenda in Italy. So basically, that was a statement to shrug the media off. And I mean. you know lukaku the way he left it was not really appreciated by a lot of fans uh, and even a few teammates didn't like it like i'm pretty like if if a lot of teammates were ashkrini or bastoni they didn't really have anything nice to say about lukaku neither negative not nice it was a very neutral response so i mean <laughs> you know we are way past lukaku now like we do miss him on the pitch but it's it's a foregone it's it's done you know he had the chance to stay but he had to go back to chelsea so it is what it is you know and manas talking from uh, moving on from inter to liverpool uh, inter like you mentioned have some issues in their team and all that for us after 2019 november i think this is the first time where we almost have a fully fit squad i don't think we have any injuries yeah. and you know long may it continue touch wood what are you thinking are you very confident going into this where, where basically what i'm asking is where do you think this game will be won and lost Nick, Nidhi, I think uh, over our one and a half years since we've been medicine mock, I think we are confident. We are always confident. Yeah, of course. Uh, never overconfident. We are not cocky bastards. We, we we are confident that we'll get the job done. And I think that uh, against Inter, we should get the job done. But it won't be easy at all. And and I mean, won't be surprised if Inter end up winning the first leg as well. Yeah. Because they are a quality side. They are champions of Italy. Uh, Where will this game be won or lost? The intensity, the intensity of our side. You know, like when we play in the Champions League. You know, one example: FC Porto is a good team, but we screw them again and again and again. They just don't know what happens. You know, like many of these teams just don't know what hits them. Last season was very bad because of injury. That's why you know against Real Madrid, whatever happened. Uh, even against Atletico the year before when we got knocked out, we bashed them, bro. Like and just it was it was just a bad day. It that Oblak had a game of his life, you know. Like it was we had about twelve shots on target in ninety. So I mean the sheer intensity of our play. Dumfries and Perisic will have such an important job for Inter to you know like uh, take care of Trent and Robbo. Because if if Dumfries and Perisic are defending for majority of the game, that means we are going to win the game. Uh, it's it's as simple as that. Because we are there. Then. Uh, we're going to move the ball quickly. We're going to give them no time. Uh, and I think Inter know that as well. You know, Inter know that it's going to be a tough tough task. So how Inter reacts to our game? Our game is the same. It's it's just going to be the same. This probably is going to be the most intense game that Inter plays this season. You know, uh, especially at Anfield with the crowd, it's going to be maddening. You know, so uh, I am super excited. I personally feel it's the intensity that Inter have to cope with. Uh, what do you think, brother, Parmeshwar? I think intensity is about the right word because 
the thing is inter can show that level of intensity because of how we play under inzaghi like you know the basic principles of how we play are same but with inzaghi we are a bit much more expressive than we were under conte he'll throw even his center backs up forward even if you have a 3 nil lead or a 4 nil lead that's how inzaghi is uh so he will try to match it but there are certain individual players is my worry like bidal as i said that might not be able to cope up with that like i expect perisic and dumfries to put in a good shift because perisic has been in in, in uh, you know insane form right now like he's, no, perisic, yeah he is just on probably the best player in format inter at the moment and i think intensity is right because we played napoli recently and it ended in a 1-1 draw and the way they pressed us in the first half they were they completely pretty much dominated us and it was the intensity that mattered they forced devra into an error got the early penalty and got the goal but in the second half inter had a reaction wherein they realized oh no you know what we have quality to match up to napoli and the starting eleven is better than napoli's and then we reacted and we forced them in, into making errors as well with the intensity yeah. so as as you said manas it's like you know coping with that in- intensity that counts like and you know my worry with inzaghi is that he has this tendency to make a bit of weird substitution that's the only downside so i think after a point the second half is what what will happen what what matters is that how inter make their substitutions because i think with a first 11 it will be neck and neck with liverpool i mean sort of not entirely of course but what substitutions he makes will make the entire difference for us at least and from where liverpool because again as i said you can bring on a luis diaz you you know you can bring on if fabinho i'm i'm expect fabinho to start but let's say if he's bench he can come on he can make a difference so you know and having followed liverpool personally a lot this season as well i know i saw the game versus burnley uh, you know what i've noticed is that versus compact teams liverpool tend to have a few problems as yeah. com- opposed to more free teams yeah. so i i hope i hope inzaghi notices that but let's see i mean you know i couldn't agree more that manas intensity is the right word to sum up some of this entire tie Nidhi, uh okay, so let, let's get to, okay, you want to ask me something? Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying, see, uh, of course, intensity overall will be very important. I think this game will be decided, of course, you know, um, Inter have good forwards, we have good forwards, um, defense is whatever. I think the most important area in both the legs for this game will be the midfield. And I'll tell you why. Because, um, you know, I'm... I'm because the way we play and like interplay three at the back and you know their full backs go forward our full backs go forward even with you know fabinho dropping in we need a guy who can basically number one break down play when inter you know attack and hence fabinho is very very important we also need a guy you manas you talked about moving the ball quickly so we need a guy who can get into those half spaces win those you know second balls and pass that forward which is why i think thiago is very very important for this game yeah yeah, yeah. i i you and me know what the midfield is going to be yeah but according to me defend we've all spoken about our forwards and you know the right back left back i think the most important area for both the teams and for inter as well i think to stop trent if you have to stop trent or robo or sala i mean basically the midfield becomes very very important because you both teams will, will need to cut that supply off yeah. but but our our great thing na nidhi our great thing is that we can we can play shit in the midfield and van dyke ha that the pass de dega kidhar pone mein sala bhag raha uske piche trend ka it is it, like i i mean these are good times to be a liverpool supporter uh, but uh, let's let's get to uh, the lineups guys yeah. we don't want to stretch this weird yeah much. great brother like parmeshwar like really really a lot of fun uh, yeah, what 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 is your starting lineup going to be so i mean what i want is pretty much similar to what is going to be fielded so i'll just spell that out so hanovic will be in goal and my worry remains that amanas you have obviously covered this area obviously on the kick off show so you know how much error prone he's been of late uh, you know we'll have skriniar devray and hopefully bastoni but if he can't make it will be federico di marco right wing back will be dumfries without barella we'll have to play better he was pretty decent he didn't have much to do like for say he was calm he didn't get nervous but again he wasn't up against a pacey player uh, on his side so let's see how he, if he plays versus liverpool uh, brozovic key man the a top two player for inter this season easily if you nullify brozovic that's a that's pretty much a wrap for us because 
everything goes through brozovic from the midfield to the defense everything goes through brozovic hakan chalonolu uh, you know many people thought he won't work out at inter but has been very good this season uh, so yeah and perisic again a workhorse i'm very interested to see perisic uh, you know versus strength and when while perisic versus sala while defending i'm very i'm looking forward to it and up top we are going to obviously have most likely jeco and alexis as per latest news but i think because of the work rate that lotharo martinez puts it he's a he's a pressing machine so i i prefer lotharo to start but i think alexis will start can you repeat the midfield three for me uh oh, sorry uh bidal brozovic and barel uh this thing hakan chalan okay bidal will be that okay. yeah okay okay nidhi for you not the inter lineup the liverpool lineup first uh Alisson, of course, in goal. Um, Trent and Robbo as fullbacks. Um, Van Dijk. I have a sneaky suspicion Klopp will start Konate in this one. I have a suspicion. Uh, although I don't mind Konate, it's not like I mind Konate starting. But I think Konate will start. Midfield. My midfield would be Fabinho, Thiago, and Henderson. Uh, right purely because you know we will need some we will need lots of communication in this one and the front line i would go with sala jota and sadio mane okay this is the lineup that i would be going with yeah i uh, i just think one change i i think matip comes in matip uh, but uh, yeah jota sala mane uh, Like you were saying, the destroy will be Luis Diaz. Uh, Luis Diaz, sir. Yeah. So if I be no, uh, Thiago will be the one doing the dirty work, passing it around. Hendo's leadership, especially away from home, the crowd is going to be massive at San Siro. It's it's going to be intimidating, you know. It yeah. Is, we need yeah. that vocal presence, like you mentioned about John Henderson. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is, there is, there is, there is a case for Nabi Keita to play, but I would play Hendo in the second. Maybe I agree with you. Just one change from your lineup. So can I ask? Can I ask you guys something? So, like, yeah. I mean, following Liverpool this season, not as much as you guys, of course. You know, I've seen some people be critical of Henderson to an extent, like. <laughs> but I know his, I know his leadership qualities are very important. But do you think it's worth playing? Like, I know you gave your reasons right now, but do you think it's worth taking the gamble right now? Because even versus Burnley, I could understand what people have been saying about Henderson. Like, do you really think it's wise to oh, bench him? What do you think people are saying about Henderson? Let's get. It. I think it. I think it's just the lack of. Incis- incisiveness per se, like you know, making those more of forward runs is what I've seen at least from Liverpool. Some Liverpool fans, I'm not going to say the entire fan base or anything, yeah. but what I think Nabi Keita slightly does better as well is that his ball retention ability also, just from what I've watched, seems a tad bit better to me. Like, wouldn't you want that to you know capitalize on a chance where Barella is not playing at all? Like, wouldn't you want to use that in an advantage versus Vidal or something? Just your what are your thoughts on that? look uh, first of all i agree with that assessment uh, this has not been a very good season for henderson mm. right so that is not incorrect to say he um, i think the underlying issue i initially thought was basically klopp has asked him to do a different role but now i think there is some problem with his fitness there is there is an issue having said so um, you need you know someone with leadership to organize defenses especially when i say midfield nabi keita is great right and i don't see henderson playing the entire 90 minutes also to be honest with you right um nabi keita is great and i think he might come on also but we need henderson especially in the away leg to make sure that the communication between the midfield defense and attack is effective that is going to be very very important that is my reason of picking henderson but i agree with the assessment that no no you... i i completely get it like uh, you have to have an important communicator on the pitch otherwise it falls apart it's as simple as that and and i also feel that uh, jordan henderson ko zyada hi stick milta hai huh. wo bhi hai wo milta hi hai like i'm just thinking of three massive games like man united away everton away uh, milan at home at anfield is for the winner uh, He was just remarkable, like in those games, and and I think Henderson is a big game player. And Nabi Keita, uh, I mean, like Abhi Thiago, खेलेगा अगर जब Ben Henderson went off, Thiago came on. 
you know, like uh, if if you have Fabinho and Thiago with Henderson, so Henderson's ka game bhi thoda badta hai. Maybe that incisive pass will is not his role anymore. It is the role of someone else, you know. So uh, I I am a huge Henderson supporter and fan. So uh, at times I get annoyed by when our own people just give him so much stick. Uh, okay, so uh, before we end this video, Anishwar, like first of all, thank you so much. It's been one of our best videos that I really did. It's been very free flowing. Uh, so we gonna take percentage now. Okay, hmm. how confident are you? Fifty, fifty, forty, sixty, thirty, seventy. When it comes to uh, in terms of confidence, I guess over the. Uh, do you mean the first leg or like over both the legs? How do you? First leg, first leg, first leg. If first leg win, then automatically second leg chance will increase. Man, I have to say fifty-fifty because I just can't. You know, I want to be a bit biased on here and I want to, you know, give the prediction from an inter perspective. You know, but you know, you can't just deny the quality of Liverpool. You can't just shrug that off and say, you know, I'm just going to be biased and say sixty, forty, seventy, thirty. That just doesn't happen for me. I would say fifty-fifty with a bit of optimism, but I know Liverpool are the favourites going into the first and the second leg. And just to put out there, you know, tomorrow San Siro is going to be packed. You it in Italy we have people of old school thinking running the league, so you won't have stadiums of stadiums at hundred percent capacity. At fifty percent capacity and around two thousand five hundred Liverpool fans will be present. So you know that makes all the difference. Like you guys have a tremendous fan base first of all, and. You know, it's just the you know our fan base will be behind us as well. So, you know, it's just about backing the team at this point because versus a team like Liverpool, you need all this. So yeah, for me, it's fifty-fifty in the first leg at least. And based on that, let's see how the second leg goes. Yeah, yeah, Nidhi, कुछ कुछ बोलना है कुछ पूछना है before we end. Hey, मतलब I agree. Yeah, you have to respect your opposition, and that goes for us as well. We are playing the league leaders in Italy. Uh, Inter are a very good side. so for me it's 50 50 as well but before we before we end parmeshwar um score predictions damn it uh like i know i just said 50 50 but uh I, you know it, it's going to be contradictory but i'll say one like 2 1 inter because i just can't 2 1 inter because i just can't see liverpool not scoring uh because when you have a shaky keeper like handanovic i of course the quality of liverpool i'm not going to take that away from you guys you know mane is coming off a brilliant afcon campaign following each every each and every senegal match amazing performance and yeah i think 2-1 inter only based on optimism don't take it in the wrong way you know if somebody listens to this but yeah only based on optimism 2-1 inter you can say wrong way yaar you're an inter fan but, but uh, sorry sorry one more question before we end it yeah yeah uh, what's your prediction for the second leg वो लाइनअप आता है ना कैंपिंग सिंह में हमेशा होता है यू सी दोस गाइस लाइनअप और एक फ्रेम आता है यू लाइक अरे बाप रे यार वी आर अगेंस्ट दिस गाइस परमेश्वर से पहले मैं आंसर दूं मेरे को कौन से डेफिनेटली हां हां एडिन रेको बिकॉज़ दैट गाय ऑलवेज स्कोर्स अगेंस्ट दिस रोमा इट्स लाइक दैट गाय इज अ मेनेस डेफिनेटली आई थिंक यू नो व्हाट It's going to sound strange, but I'm going to say Van Dyke. Strange in the sense that you would expect me to say an attacking player, but why I say Van Dyke is because if you contain Jeko and Lothar, oh, that's a huge deal. You know, like that's a huge deal. Like you are, they, then we are relying on our midfield to score, and that's double work for our midfield then. And I feel that Van Dyke's imposing presence is going to be tough for Eden Jeko, and even if he marks Lothar, oh, however it goes, or Alexis, whoever it is. So I personally fear Van Dyke the most if I had to. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna see Origi score for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So this was the preview for the first leg of uh, the round of 16, Inter versus Liverpool. The UEFA Champions League. It's great to have Inter back in the knockout stage. It's great to visit the San Siro again. We can expect a great atmosphere. We can expect a great game. And yeah, I'm super excited. Parmeshwar, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. You know, thank you for having me on. Before I conclude, can I get your score predictions because we didn't get those from you and Nidhi? So, so can we have the? Nidhi doesn't do predictions. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, since you're asking me, I'm gonna say. Uh, wow, I'm gonna say uh, first leg. It's gonna be two two. Okay. 
Fair enough. I, I expect I expect us to be a little shaky. Uh, hmm. One slow against Burnley, a high line is something. If you guys, uh, I I don't I haven't followed Inter much this season, but if you hmm. guys really work on your set plays and hmm. uh, if if you have noticed what you what what our downfall can be at times, I expect you guys uh, to score a few, and I'm hmm. confident that we will score as well. Okay, I, I, I am confident. Uh, and I, thanks, yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me on, Manas and Nidhi. So much, like uh, you know, it's a great experience to be on this channel, be, be, especially being a subscriber and following your content. You know, so, so excited for that tie, even though we are not the favorites. You know, just can't wait for the game. So thank you so much, and yeah, looking forward to the match. Pleasure, pleasure. If yeah, any fans are watching, you can subscribe just like your friend. Uh, our life is easy. Karo, our content is very good and pure. Hai. We do our best. to chalk out good content so yeah this was it uh nidhi signing off you want to say something before we do no no absolutely yaar thank you so much parmeshwar for making the time uh, guys uh, whoever is watching it if you like the video please make sure that you hit the like button uh, if you are new here a subscribe would be brilliant looking forward to the tie parmeshwar good luck to you and up the reds good luck man good luck yeah.